which of these is going to be the best Chinese lens manufacturers in 2024? Hi, it's Jimmy Chang here from Red35 and welcome back to the channel. Yes, as you heard, I'm trying to find out exactly which of these companies is the best Chinese lens manufacturers in 2024. And if you follow this channel long enough, you know that I have collaborated literally all the Chinese lens manufacturers in the past. Most of them would be for my Micro Four Third platforms, but as of late last year, I started to review other formats and other mounts, such as Nikon Z APS-C and some of the Leica mounts as well. So I have a wealth of knowledge and also experience in encountering all these Chinese lenses here, and I'm gonna name the best one out of them together with some honorable mentions. So as you can see that I have quite a few lenses right here in front of me, but this is only a very, very tiny portion of my entire collection. I have a cabinet, in fact, a room full of these lenses. I think between Richard Wong and I, I, you know, we can probably open a museum just to, you know, showcase all the collection that we have. The reason I haven't sold any of this is for historical reasons, or perhaps maybe study. Yes. Chinese lenses were, you know, happening and designed and released in the domestic market within China a long time ago, way before we actually see any of that, that stuff that we see in the last few years. Uh, but for the international market, for people living in the West, we're starting to see these lenses right about 2015, 2016. This is the time when they're starting to come a little bit and, uh, and starting to release and sell to the international market. And the very first um, Chinese lens review that I've done was the Lauer 4 millimeters. Uh, I believe it's 4 or 4.5, I cannot remember now. One of those uh, fish eye lenses I uh, reviewed back in 2016 and 17. Really, it's quite a long time ago now. But yes, that was a fun lens review and uh, I enjoyed it. And ever since that video, I have received a ton of emails from other manufacturers such as Pergear, 7 Artisan, and TD Artisan. They're starting to come uh, and knocking on the door and say, would you like to look at our lenses? We'd like to test them. Of course, I would say yes, you know, um, because I... I would like to see Chinese lenses more because we don't actually get to buy them in this country back in those days. So it was interesting, it was fascinating, and just want to see them and test them and see how they do. But more importantly, um, because that was the beginning, and now, you know, 2024 now, we, we have a lot of releases since 2015, 16. So like we now can see how much the Chinese lens manufacturing and design performances has improved in the last six, seven years. Another big evolution, of course, is the inclusion of autofocus. And this happened around three to three and a half years ago. Uh, started with smaller manufacturers, and but the early generations of autofocus were absolutely horrendous. But seriously, in a space of two years, three years, they have improved dramatically. Now they're using latest uh, step motors, you know, their technology has improved to the point that I could I could almost say they can rival some of the uh, main players in the market. Uh, this really reminds me of the early days of Japanese third-party lenses, the likes of Sigma, Tamron, Tokina. These were companies, uh, you know, with lots of history, but when they first start out in the 80s and 90s, I could say the same thing about, you know, what Chinese lenses are today. Uh, it's phenomenal. Their development is great. And now, look at Sigma. Sigma is one of the best third-party lenses out there right now, and the performance is really out of the world. Um, I love Sigma lenses, so don't get me wrong there but i'm obviously this is more concentrating on chinese lenses right here but like i said the development is lightning fast in the space of two years two and a half years their improvement is dramatic in this video i'm going to name three top chinese lens manufacturers in 2024 together with two honorable mentions at the end of the video so without further ado let's have a look at our first nomination and it is Sirei. I first reviewed Cedroy's lenses back in uh, 2020, 21. I cannot exactly remember. I reviewed so many lenses, but I was reviewing one of the anamorphic lenses and I was super impressed with the quality of the build and also imagery. Um, you know, it's one of the, I would say, more affordable options you can get on the market right now. Uh, whether it's going to be Michael Four Third, APS-C or Full Frame, doesn't really matter. They have mounts for every one of those formats in the cine world. Um, so that's fantastic because I am majority a Michael Four Third guy. So it's good to see some Michael Four Third lenses, right? So absolutely fine uh, but 
last year they released this this is their first autofocus series which is the sniper series uh once again they have uh, announced this and released via the indiegogo crowdfunding campaign which you know it was a successful uh, campaign and uh, with just like all the other campaigns in the past uh, so it's great great to see them doing that sort of thing and uh, and also being so successful and deliverable as well um i was happy to see the trinity here the 23 33 and the 56 millimeters all of them were stunning in particular the 33 millimeters i think is probably the best one out of the three there it's sharp it's contrasty but still maintaining a really kind of old school organic look that I really like for vintage photography. So this is a gem here. Um, autofocus is pretty quick. I wouldn't say it's the quickest in the world, uh, but the build quality is certainly on par with some of the more premium offering. The only thing, the only thing I ever would talk about the sniper lenses is actually the the lack of weather sealing and that's the, probably the only thing and i would like to see some weather seal lenses from zero from now on but also more importantly make it for like full frame and also michael four third because you know come on make something for me michael four third guy here the second nomination is well it is quite obvious right it's going to be viltrox right you know that i started reviewing viltrox lenses uh probably three years ago but more recently and since last year i started to receive the autofocus lenses and i love them uh, the 75 millimeters 1.2 pro and this one right here this is the 27 millimeters 1.2 pro for APS-C formats these little two lenses really kind of like the uh the crown of the viewtrox autofocus lens lineup because they are pro lenses they are metal built fully weather sealed they build and perform like actual pro lenses for not a lot of the price either so like it is quite surprising for how much they can make for this type of lenses uh they have other normal uh, like consumer level lenses which is not weather sealed maybe plasticky and things like that but they're still really good optically um you know the likes of 21 uh, 22 8 and also the 28 millimeters 1.8 they're all fantastic lenses um i'm going to review more lenses from them in the future but as of now i think they do produce a range of uh, autofocus lenses for APS-C and full frame format and what i would like to see them though is maybe perhaps one day start to make something for the Michael Forthard well um I don't think they have made a lot of Michael Forthard lenses you know even when they were first started so I would just like to see some from them because that will make my day because I would like to use some of their view truck lenses on my Michael Forthard body imagine that I'm pretty sure there's an appetite for it if you think view truck should make some Michael Forthard lenses please leave the comment section down below my third nomination is well quite obvious it's going to be Lawa Lawa is one of my favorite companies of all time in the camera world. You know, I watched them grow literally. Uh, like the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I first reviewed their fish eye lens over the Michael Forster platform, and I loved that lens. And ever since, I started to look at all the other lenses there, like the uh, the 17 millimeters 1.8 and then also all the ultra wide angle lenses like the 7.5 which i totally love the 9 the 10 and then also the 6 millimeters which i crowned the lens of the year just over a year ago they are just fantastic optics there then i start to look at the anamorphic lenses and just some crazy weird like the probe lens and things like that it's just a lot to see from there uh but this year, they have something really special to basically uh, talk a little bit about their history and also celebrating the 10th anniversary with a 10 millimeter focal length lens. This is the 10 28 for full frame lens. I think this is an incredible optic, incredible lens, and also comes with a premium package and design. I simply think that there's currently no better Chinese made lenses out there. This is the best. I'm not talking about focal length, you know, that's just debatable, you know, whether it's useful to use is another thing, but in terms of a lens as a product, as a design, as the performance, I think the 10mm 2.8 is by far definitely the best out there right now. So I love that uh, and also love Lauer in general, just because they keep pushing the boundary forward. And what I would like to see uh, in the future for the future developments, obviously more AF lenses, but more importantly, more support for other formats such as APS-C and of course my beloved Michael Four Thirds. So I did say there are two honorable mentions. So before I announce which of these three manufacturers to be the best Chinese lens manufacturers in 2024, let's have a look at the other two nominations. 
So yes, I have a bunch of Chinese lenses here and I think I may have missed one or two because I can't find them in my collection. That's, it's too many to go through. But anyway, I have picked out a few that I actually did review. Uh, for instance, the Pergear, uh, Seven Artisan, TT Artisan, Makey, uh, Brighting Star, and also uh, some newcomers such as Archer Lab. So the two best one out of the bunch, I would say is, first of all, TT Artisan, and also a newcomer, Archer Lab. TT Artisan is just you know, to me, a very interesting company. They are very, very cool. You know, they, they like to mess around with the designs and things like that. But to me, it's fine. You know, I, I'm totally up for it because I don't want people to just, you know, just be very generic, you know, just having a black metal barrels and, and just, you know, sometimes can be quite boring to look at. But TT Artisan can be very adventurous in terms of design. You know, the 23 millimeters one four that I totally adore, I really, really like. And even this one here, this is kind of like a, a mimicking one of those uh, Leica lenses, the 28 millimeters 5.6 uh, with the square brass metal hood. It, it, you know, to me, this is just phenomenal. I like this lens a lot. I used it on my Leica actually. It just really give you the old school feel and look, uh, not only just the, the, the physical appearance of it, but actual imagery and not for like a prices. So that's the main thing, right? But also because of the tiny size, I also managed to adapt to the original Olympus Panf camera, which still looks the part. So this is one heck of a street lens here. The second company I want to talk to you guys about is, of course, this guy right here. This is the Archer Lab. They are relatively new in the manufacturing side of it. They started making lenses probably about four or five years ago, and they're most concentrating on the 50 millimeters for Leica Air Mount when they first started. And I love the 50, uh, 50 millimeters 1.1. That particular lens is fun to use. I used it on my Leica once again, and the imagery coming out from it is very vintage. It does remind me of the 60s rendering from Leica themselves. So like I said, once again, I love my vintage photography. I like things to look a little bit old school without going overboard. And so that particular lens is actually very, very good. But what caught my eyes and what I think that made my decision for the honorable mention today is this guy right here. This is the 35mm 1.4 for Nikon Z. Well, quite obvious, right? This is actually Nikon lens design. So uh, it's, it's phenomenal. The build quality, I would say is amongst the best on the Chinese market right now. Very smooth and all the colors engraving is just like, like premium. I'm talking about premium thing here. Uh, they just great lens altogether. And it's good for the, the Leica ZF and the ZFC because of the look, look at that. I wish Nikko would make something like this, but they don't. They have the plastic key, uh, kind of like retro SE lenses for the ZF and the ZFC there, the uh, 40 millimeters F2. This is a proper thing, proper genuine offering for vintage photography. So it looks great on ZFC and ZF cameras, and I think nothing can beat that because of that. Um, it has two versions. They have uh, this particular one here is the 80s version. They have a 60 version as well. Two of them are just phenomenal. Just depending on your personal taste, you can go for one or the other. If you have the money, get both of them. They're not that expensive, and I would highly recommend them if you're really going for the ZF and the ZFC look. Uh, yeah, this is just phenomenal. And optically, once again, I think on the vintage side, but not bad at all. I mean, I think I like the look of their images. Uh, if you're using for filming, yeah, once again, you can get some really awesome kind of old school looking without having to add mist filters, just trying to force the camera to look like old stuff. But you can actually get something like this with this lens right here. So it's good. It's 1.4. It's tiny, full metal built, high build quality, really smooth focusing. You can't get better than this. And they're having more lenses coming as well. So like it's worth checking out their cameras, uh, not camera, the lenses. I'm going to put some links of all these manufacturers down in the description. So you can check them out individually. So they are really, really good. Okay, so these are my two honorable mentions for today's video. So it is time to announce the best lens manufacturers in 2024. Brains for impact, but without surprise, it is going to be lower, right? I totally adore their lenses. I totally adore the company and I've met them in person. It's just phenomenal. Uh, you know, th these are all great companies here, but Lawa really stood out in terms of their effort in making the best possible performing lenses for us photographers out there, right? 
Not only photographers now, they are in the cine world. They have some phenomenal cine lenses out there, professional cine lenses for not a lot of money. So I think in general, they're doing us a great favor for offering value for money, but also performance uh, uh, that is higher than the price tax, which is really, really good. And all the others are phenomenal. You know, I love all the Chinese lenses in front of me, all the manufacturers, and I just like to see them grow. It's just phenomenal to see the changes over the last few years. It just something that I cannot be more proud of being a Chinese myself. So uh, it's, it's good. I mean, I, I like to see more stuff. And obviously being a Michael Forthert guy, you know, still, I, I just want to see some of you guys to maybe give us some options for Michael Forthert, especially in, in the autofocus development. So listen, guys, and uh, I really want Celia to have some autofocus for Michael Forthert. So it's Viltrox and of course, my beloved Laura. And uh, you guys, can you make some Michael Forthert autofocus lenses? We have an app tie here for you guys so yeah if you do prefer some yeah please let me know then i'm pretty sure that a lot of uh my viewers like who are watching right now probably will agree with me that you would like to buy some lower view choice series autofocus micro for the lenses right yeah and anyway um perhaps i'm going to see some more autofocus lenses from per gear tt artisan and seven artisan in the coming months and uh, if i do you'll see them uh in my review sections there so stay tuned for all my lens review in the future uh I would love to uh, continue to inform you and also showcasing some of the best of Chinese lens manufacturing together. Of course, my usual uh, uh, lens review from Nikon and Ohm Systems and Panasonic. So there are a lot to come, there are a lot to do, and I'm super tired. So all your support is very much appreciated. So if you can share this and also subscribe to this channel, that would be amazing. Help me reach a new level in 2024. So thank you very much for watching and you know what to do. Remember, I already said a thumb and like and also follow this journey of mine for retro photography. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. So until next time, I'll see you all very soon. Peace. Welcome to my bonus sessions. Yes, I have crowned once again Lauer for the best lens manufacturers in 2024. They are deserving this award because uh, they're a great company. Uh, I think they have managed to make some really, really great products. Their team is fantastic. And overall, I think they are moving towards the premium sector in the Chinese lens manufacturing. Certainly, you can see that with the 10 mm 2.8, yeah, it's nothing like uh, I haven't seen before, but they are definitely one of the best lenses uh, I have come across in a full frame world. This is a 10, 10 2.8 rectilinear without having to use any lens profile corrections. This is crazy. This is a nut. So it is good. It is really good. It's not a lens reward, but uh, award, but then, uh, yeah, it's, it's just great lenses. Silo has made some stunning options out there. They, I know they're reading some more. You know, if you haven't seen my photography show coverage. Yeah, the link is up here. You're going to see that uh, because uh, Ciro is continuing to make lots of lenses. In fact, I have two new lenses from them. Uh, not autofocus, still many focus. It's a cine lens, uh, it, which is going to be in my review next month. So that is going to be cool. Uh, Viewtrock, I don't have to say much about Viewtrocks. They have done so much in the autofocus industry uh, for us uh, uh, photographers out there. I think they've done really, really well. Uh, I just want to see more options. I just want to see Michael Forther. I want to see uh, full frame pro lenses. That would be awesome. And uh, yeah, just generally really, really cool. And the rest, I like them more. Archerlab, Archerlab got some really stunning developments. I really like these guys. They deserve more recognitions than, uh, you know, than anybody else out here because they are small. They currently only have a small selection of lenses, but they are producing some really high quality stuff. And uh, like I said, I have the link in the description. You should really check them out for the lenses. Uh, for those who use them, would vouch for them. And that's how good it is. So if you don't trust me, try one and get and just try one yourself. Then you'll see what I mean. And makey, cool, you know, very cool stuff there uh, per gear. And these are very low end budget lenses. So if you watch this stuff to dabble around with manual focusing photography, vintage photography, but without having to spend much, these are good choices because they are relatively cheap there. Um, they're similar to 7, uh, 7 Artisan and TT Artisan. But now there's also stuff starting to, you know, up the game a little bit with autofocus. So you may starting to see their prices creeping up a little bit from now on. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I just I love doing this sort of thing because um, 
uh, my experience in using all of the lenses here because it's really hard for me to summarize every single bit of it. Otherwise, this will be a like, I don't know, five hours videos. I would like to talk a lot about each individual brand, um, but you know, time's limited and I know you probably won't have the patience for it either. So that's why I'm trying to do a very small summary here to just nominate three top ones and two honorable mentions. So there you go. Finished, done, I'm done. So I'm heading to Japan next week, uh, which is gonna be, well, by the time you watch this video, I'm already in Japan. So uh, uh, all the best. Uh, I will see you when I come back. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.